All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to another Elevator Parts video. Today we're going to be working on this Kone Series 220 call button. So just by taking a first glance at this button, you can see it doesn't look like your typical Kone button here. Because obviously we are missing a button. We have this protective paper still on here. You can tell this thing's been sitting around for a while because the corner that's peeled off is absolutely disgustingly dirty already. So the goal of today's video is to repair this bottom button. I have an extra button which we're going to do some work on to make it work. And we're going to clean this thing up and make it light up. So it's gonna be a pretty interesting project. We do have to make some stuff for this. Now before we get started with doing any work on it, let's just take a look at the button itself. So if we turn it over, this is what the buttons look like on the back. There's not really a whole lot to it, just a little circuit board. So first on top here, you can see here's the information about the button. On the top here, we have the back of the key switch. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the actual key for this, so we're not gonna make it do anything. Maybe one day if we get the key, I'll be able to uh, do something with it, but for now, just gonna sit there and look pretty. Here's the circuit board on the back. So these buttons are quite interesting on how they're held in. So this one I think is broken a little bit because you can just push it out like that where they should actually stick in there once you press them in. But to take the circuit board off, you press in these two black pins and then you can pull the circuit board off and we'll poke the button out. So here's the actual button piece here. And if we flip it over, there's not really a whole lot to it. Here's back behind and it doesn't really move a whole lot. See, it only moves just a tiny bit there. Now, when we take a look at the circuit board, and you see there's those two crosses right there on the back, and that presses down on these two little buttons. And what I find interesting is it has these interesting, like, I don't even know what this is. It looks like it's dry rotted or something because it's all just flaking off and it just looks terrible. But you can press both of the buttons. And there are eight lights total that light up the ring. So there's four on either side, you can see here. Here's the back of the board. Here's where you would hook it up to the controller. I do find it interesting though how it has these little um, little cushion pieces on it, which I don't, I don't see the point of that. And putting the circuit board on is pretty simple. There's actually two little pins here on the side which you have to line up with in order for it to clip on correctly. Once you line that up, it sticks right back into place. And the button's ready to go again. So the first step with this project is I'm gonna take off this protective coating because it looks awful with it on there. And we're just gonna clean up the plate while we don't have all the other buttons and stuff put on there. So this should be hopefully fairly simple. Let's give it a go. All right, well you can really tell the parts that weren't actually connected on there. And look how dirty this thing is. It looks absolutely awful. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is pull everything off of this button and just scrub this thing down and make it nice and clean again because I mean, that looks terrible. All right, so I finished cleaning up the plate and it looks a whole lot better now, nice and shiny. So I just gotta go ahead and put this other button back in real quick. All right, and there we go. We have the one button put in, but now we need another button. So while we were going through the Elevate Tours Elevator Museum, I found this. This is actually another Series 220 button, but the only problem is, is it doesn't have the arrow. So this is what the button would look like without an arrow. We also have a brand new circuit board. So if we take a look at the button real quick, see it looks exactly like the other one, just it doesn't have any arrow or number or whatever. Same thing on the back here, looks exactly the same. Here we have a nice shiny new circuit board. And look at the little foam pads on this one. They're nice and new. And I still don't see the point of those, but I guess every single button has them. So we could put it on like this but it would look kind of stupid. So, I have an idea. All right, so here we have the CAD model. So this here is the original plastic piece I made, but what I did is I took a picture of the button and overlaid a photo of it and drew some lines and created the arrow out of that. So we have two parts to this model. We have the actual filler piece, which will be made out of black plastic. And then we have this piece here, which is the white arrow, which will be printed out of white plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and export these to my 3D printer. And let's go ahead and get started.
All right, we have our two pieces here, and all we need to do now is simply just combine them together here. And look at that. We have ourselves a down arrow. If we just compare it to the up arrow, I mean, it looks pretty much identical, as uh, close as I could get it. But now let's stick it in the button. So that's what it's gonna look like. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm really happy with the way that came out. So obviously this is not gonna hold itself in there, so we are gonna have to glue it a little bit. And the piece inside doesn't hold itself in either. So we'll just apply a little bit of glue, put that in there, and then we'll glue this onto here. All right, so the button here is all glued into place and it looks really nice. So the next thing we gotta do is snap it into place here. And this is a brand new button, so it's actually gonna click into place. And it stays. It'll stay in there. It's locked in there. This one comes out because it's older, but this one's gonna stay in place. All right, the down button is latched in place. Now we just need to add the circuit board. Now one thing I'm gonna note real quick is there's a reason why these buttons are really cheap. If you press this button right now, listen to it. It presses, but it doesn't really feel like it's pressing. And another thing to note is look how much of that foam is on these buttons. So keep that in mind. We're gonna go ahead and snap this on here. Now listen how much better this button presses. You can actually hear it press, and you can see it's actually sticking up, unlike this one, which is so flat. Now, the reason why I say that is I was testing these buttons a second ago, the contacts. This one works great, but this one doesn't actually work. That's because the little foam pieces on here have been worn down completely flat. And now the button won't actually press in anymore. It presses it in somewhat, but not enough to make the LEDs light up. And that's kind of an epic fail. I mean, why would you design it where you have just a piece of foam is what actually presses down the button. And it, once that foam wears out, it quits working. Now this board does in fact work. I did test it and pressing the buttons down, the lights turn on, but it won't work on that button. So fortunately we have another circuit board we can use here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this guy up. Here we go, one brand new circuit board. You see it has nice new pads on here. I'm just gonna snap this brand new board on here, turn it around. What an improvement, that presses so much better. So now that we've got the buttons all sorted out here, both of them work very nicely and they, they definitely press a lot better than they did. And the next thing we need to do is make it do something cool, make it light up. We're just gonna go ahead and use this old board for reference. This is how you wire these buttons. There are four pins on the back. The two outer pins, so this one and this one, are for the contacts, or for the buttons. So you would use these outer two for your buttons, and both of them are connected to the same circuit. So you press one, it completes the contact, you press the other one, it completes, it doesn't matter. And then you have the middle here, which control the LEDs. And we're gonna be able to run these off of a nine volt battery. So what I'm actually gonna do is since I don't have any plugs for this, I'm gonna lightly solder onto each one. If I can just barely put a wire on each one, it can be easily removed. So if, if we ever wanna take those wires off and actually use a connector, there won't be any damage to it. It'll be super easy to remove. So I'm gonna do that on both of the buttons and then wire it all together. And then we will have these things light up and it's gonna look super epic. Alright guys, the wiring is complete. Let's hook up a battery and check it out. Look at that. It works. And it looks pretty cool. So unfortunately I didn't have the, uh, the key to test out the key switch to make it light up. But I think this is good enough and this is pretty cool because they both light up and they look pretty sweet. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little build. I had a lot of fun doing this. Turning this half completed button into a fully working button with brand new circuit boards, a new button for the down, and it lights up. So it's pretty awesome. So anyway, that is going to be all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'm always open for more ideas for more of these videos. So leave your ideas down in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time.